It's an implement worthy of the strongest athletes in the world. The Tower of Power kicks things off at the 2022 Rogue Invitational. Glad you're with us, everybody, at the Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Lawrence Chalet and Boz. Some incredible athletes are here outside of Austin, Texas. The defending champion is back. Martins Lietzis looking to repeat as Rogue Invitational champion, but it will not be easy for him. It won't be easy. He's an incredible athlete, been to so many shows, and he's very, very rarely off the podium. But we've got some big opposition for him this weekend. It's going to be a battle. And this is the first test. The Tower of Power, 13,000 pounds of wood, another 2,000 pounds of steel on that thing. And it is 60 seconds to lift 900 pounds as many times as you can. Laws, what on earth does it take to be successful at this event? This event is all about back and leg strength. These guys need to prove they are the strongest when it comes to the lower body. It's a little bit higher than we had last year on the deadlift. Last year we had the elephant bar. This bar is from, uh, from 18 inches and what I love about the Rogue Invitational is we can't just have a deadlift. We've got to make it an epic deadlift. We've got the Tower of Power, 900 pounds for repetitions. This is monstrous weight. The top 10 strongest guys on the planet right now competing for the Rogue Invitational. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is on top of that Tower of Power. Guys, there's a lot of time, energy, and materials put into the Tower of Power. It's made out of 13,000 pounds of wood, 2,000 pounds of steel, and then that weight carriage, cables, and bar comes to a total of 900 pounds that our strongmen are going to be getting after. And of course, Rogue put that clock front and center because you know the strongmen will be keeping a close eye on it. Thank you, Kiki. Kevin Ferris will be the first man up. He was on top of the platform there, getting set to lift. Ferris making his first appearance here at the Rogue Invitational, one of the seven athletes who were not in the competition last year. Yeah, this year's lineup completely different to last year, but we have the defending champion. We have the guy that came third in last year's show as well, plus a whole host of new incredible youngsters. Ferris getting set to open things up here. 60 seconds to complete as many lifts as he possibly can. So Kevin's had a few issues with deadlifting over the last couple of years, but in his last competition, he did very well on the deadlift. He had some nerve damage. That seems to have cleared up now. Let's see how he's feeling, how training's gone, and how many reps can Kevin Ferris do with 900 pounds. Athletes are allowed to use straps. So they're allowed the standard straps that you see there. They're not allowed the figure of eight straps where they can kind of drop the bar lower on their hands. They need to make sure they're tightly strapped in. No suits allowed this year. There we go. 900 pounds, as you can see how heavy that is with Kevin. But he manages to get that first rep. Gets the down signal from referee. 60 seconds, one rep in for Kevin. Two reps down now for Kevin Ferris. Official time being kept on the tower. 900 pounds is monstrous for, weight, for, for repetitions. There's athletes that potentially wouldn't lift this for one. Kevin starting us off, two reps so far. I think maybe he's got one more in him. Nope, he's leaving it there. Two repetitions is very, very unlikely now. We'll see him come back to the bar and get this weight. Using the time limit, he wants to get that extra rep. He knows there's some big, big deadlifters coming, the likes of Pavlo Nekonechny. Novikov, an excellent deadlifter from a higher pull. He needs to get as many reps on the table as he can. Ferris is going to call it. Two successful reps for Kevin Ferris to start us off. Bobby Thompson should be the next man out. And Bobby should be good at this event. He is built to deadlift. He is built for power. He's not such a fan of the fitness, the endurance type events. But when it comes to static strength, Bobby is a beast. I saw Bobby Thompson at the Arnold Classic earlier this year. He took third. He was fantastic over at the Arnolds. And that is a, a heavy static competition. This competition a little bit more mixed in terms of athleticism as well as the heavy events. But we're starting off with one of his favorites. 
Thompson also the current American record holder in the log lift at 478 pounds. And we do have a log event coming up later on in the competition. He'll be looking forward to that one. Obviously, the medley, which is the yoke into the log lift. He would prefer it if it was just the log lift, but he is decent. Hey guys, as well. so it could be a good event. But this is what he's focused on right now. 900 pounds. The target set so far, two repetitions by Kevin Ferris. But I think we're going to need to be higher than that for the big points in this one. I'm, I think looking at Kevin, one or two of these athletes could get close to 10 repetitions. I think somewhere between the 7 and 10 is where we want to be looking. Underneath the tower power. This one unique event to kick Bobby off Thompson getting himself set to try and make a run at the top score right now, which is Kevin Ferris. Only one of the ten strongmen have gone here on the opening event, the Tower of Power. There's Athor Melstead in the green shirt. So I went down there earlier and just had a look at the equipment. We stood up there, had a little tug of the bar, and that wasn't even at full weight, and it was feeling heavy. Here comes Bobby Thompson. Look how wide he is, the thickness of the shoulders, the chest, the arms. He is without question built for power. <laughs> Extremely long straps there. He doesn't want grip to be an issue whatsoever. Thompson getting himself strapped in, and then he will have 60 seconds to complete as many repetitions as he can. The second of the 10 strong men to go here. So Bobby ready to lift. And here's the command from the referee. And there we go, that's a powerful first rep from Bobby. Easy rep. There is three. Thompson just repping these out. He's got four down and still plenty of time left. That's five. This is impressive. This is what all the other athletes will be looking at right now as the target to beat. We know Bobby is strong. He's a powerful athlete, likes the heavy events, and he's starting off this event exceptionally well here. Seven total reps for Bobby Thompson. Just getting hard on the eighth, but still a good lift. Can he get to double figures? Look at the marks on his legs where that bar is scraping along his thighs. Can he get this ninth rep? Needs to stabilize. Magnus doesn't give the referee the, the down signal. I think Thompson looks like he's done, but eight officially for Bobby Thompson. It didn't look like he got credit for that last one, but that was an impressive effort. That was exceptional. Eight repetitions. Bobby will be pleased with that. Look at him. He would have wanted that ninth, but it could be a very, very good start for him. Eight repetitions with 900 pounds. Sometimes watching these strong men, we don't appreciate these weights. You really don't. You lose perspective very easily. For, the, for, the most, for average people going to a gym thinking about deadlifting, they're lifting 300, 400, maybe even 500 pounds. But you throw 900 pounds into the mix. Quite incredible. There is Alexei Novikov, the man who finished third last year here at the Rogue Invitational and had one of the most impressive feats of strength that we saw in the Sear Dumbbell event when he pressed with one arm 300 pounds over his head. His dumbbell pressing is truly exceptional, but he's very, very good at an elevated deadlift. One thing sometimes people question with Alexei is whether he's good with outer deadlift suits. So the Rogue, we don't allow deadlift suits in this competition. However, his most, one of his most recent performances in the Shaw Classic, they did an elevated deadlift and he won that event. He's won the elevated deadlift in many competitions before. I'm expecting a very solid performance here from Alexi. Let's take one more look at Bobby Thompson, who was really going touch and go for his first four or five reps. Look how easy these first few reps were. Just the power of the mass. You can see the shaking at the top, that, those barrels just causing the whole body to convulse as he kind of locks out there. 
but the power and the speed of those early reps was truly incredible. He flew through those first six reps. He got through eight with little trouble. It was the ninth rep that he got super close to completing. Be interesting to see how much that ninth rep costs him in the overall on this event. He looked like he had it, and then just ends up having to let go of the bar. It just looked like he had a slight bend in the legs that he wasn't going to Couldn't get quite lock for, the legs out. I think the pressure just building up in his body just made him have to let go in the end. Novikov there, just getting focused before this one. So eight repetitions by Bobby. It's going to be tough to beat. Novikov second at the... Arnold Classic earlier this year. Novikov has to be one of the favorites for, for this weekend's show. Very, very rarely off a podium. He's been on the podium nine out of the last 10 competitions he's done. All right, ladies Still very early in his career. He's only 26 years old, which in the strongman world is young. It is. He's the second youngest athlete in the field. Already achieved so much, and he would love to add to that resume with the Rogue Invitation. Novikov is on top of the Tower of Power, and he will try to beat Bobby Thompson's score of eight reps. Novikov now the third of the ten strongmen to go. Novikov never looks like the big beast, you know. He's not the biggest athlete there but he seems to be able to get the best out of himself on every single event. Sometimes you watch him in warm-ups and you think, this guy's got no chance. He's just not looking at it today. And then suddenly he just manages to switch on. And that's a real attribute of a champion. I think we see the same kind of thing from Martins Lissis. When it's about performing, they just manage to raise their level. Novikov is just about ready. Get things kicked off here. 60 seconds, as many reps as he can pull. Let's go! Score beat eight by Bobby Thompson. Let's go, Let's go. And we are off, ladies and gentlemen. Solid first pull. As we have just hit the five second marker. Oh, Novikov off to a great start. He's three down, now oh, four. Now Look at the technique. Oh, Every rep looking right. exactly the same. It's seven. Austin. This to tie. Now Novikov for the lead. And he will have it. Just about. We'll have to check that that one was official. Nine reps. He did get the down signal. So nine reps so far for Alexei Novikov going for double digits. Is he going to try again? He's got time. 10 seconds remaining. Seconds. I don't think he'll get another one. He'll have time to get back to the barbell. But he knows he's going to Takes the lead. One rep over Bobby Thompson. Bobby will be cursing to himself that he didn't get that ninth rep. He was capable. So close. Those are two of the big deadlifters gone. So these guys know what they need to do to, to win this. I think 10 reps is possible. Already we've seen eight and nine. Ladies and gentlemen, Novikov is done. And that will give way to Athor Melstead, who will be the next man up. 900 pounds, nine reps. So Athor isn't traditionally known as a huge deadlifter. This is going to be a tough event for him. He has some good events to come. Later on, we've got the sandbag carry, which should be good for him. Coming from Iceland, he's used to carrying the actual original Husafell stone. And he's put some good performances in on that event before. Let's see how his deadlift's looking. Has he been working hard on it over the season? We do have that Husafel bag carry coming up in the competition. Stefan Solvi in his corner there, former fourth place at World Strongest Man. The Icelandics all stick behind each other. They're like a team when they come to these events. First appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. 
Finished ninth at the World's Strongest Man earlier this year. He's a very solid performer. Not quite managed to sort of excel and, and challenge for podiums yet, but always performing solidly in competitions. Just has a couple of weaknesses that hold him back a little bit, at beating the likes of a Novikov. But he's a very, very strong man. And like I said, look out for him later when it comes to the Husserfeld sandbag carry. Nine repetitions with 900 pounds. I really felt Alexi's day one is a big, important day for him. He's got a chance of winning this competition, but with the likes of Martins and Mitch Hooper, who are both very consistent athletes, there's a couple of events he really needs to win. We know how good he is at the Sea of Dumbbell. That's the next event. He needs a top two finish on this deadlift. So, so far, he's put himself in a good position. But we still have some incredibly strong men to come. All right, folks, here we go. Martins Leites will be lifting sixth. As the fourth athlete is now making his ascent up to the top of the Tower of Power. That's Athor Melstead. Guaranteeing a big back slap here. The Icelandics like to psych each other up. There's the Roga Coaster that's coming up later on in the weekend. And How impressive does that look? It's like a carnival out there in, in the <laughs> outfield with, with everything that Roga's constructed. And in the background, you can see the, the field that is laid out for the opening event. The CrossFit competition that's coming up later on. So Athor going with no shoes, no socks. He just wants to be as low down to the platform as possible to reduce the range of motion. Obviously, if you're in shoes or you've got like a platform in those shoes, you have to pull the bar a greater distance. So he's just trying to get as low down as he can and reduce the range of motion and help him lift this incredible 900 pound weight as many times as possible. To be quite honest, one rep will be very, very good for Athol. Nine reps is the score to beat. That belongs to Alexi Novikov, and here goes Melstead. Can we get it up? It's coming. There we go. Good first rep for Athor. He'll be pleased. Now he's got to focus on Kevin's number. And he's matched it. This is very, very good from Athor. Not known as a big deadlift. Trying to put as many reps on the board as possible. Pick up as many, many points as he can on every single event. The reps are good, third he will fail, and Melstead's going to call it. So he and Ferris tied now at two reps. And I think Melstead will be very pleased with him. That's a solid performance from someone that's not known as a big dead. Keep those reps on the books at two. So Rob Kearney, who is one of the three men in the field this year who was at this event last year, will be up next. I was able to talk to him earlier in the week, and he actually thought he could do pretty well in this opening event. He's always performed well on deadlifts in the past, and being a shorter athlete, it should help him on this elevated pull. Now Rob, one of the smaller men in the field, just 5'10", 285. Let's take one more look at Alexei Novikov, who was able to get nine reps for the overall lead, and these first couple just look effortless. It's like a piston to start with every single rep. Very efficient, maximizing the length that he can get out of those straps. He's not just a strong guy, he's a smart guy as well. Very intelligent, tries to work these events out and get the most out of his body on every single performance he puts in. And that was the ninth rep for Novikov to take the lead. Ladies and gentlemen, again, if you were just joining and then this us, this is where he started to struggle. But you see that effort in the face there. Sometimes it's hard to tell how hard it is when we watch them and you think, wow, they're making it look easy. But I can tell you inside, they are feeling the strain of that weight. Well, so far, you're right on. We were talking earlier in the week, and I asked you, how many reps do you think could win this thing? And you said probably nine or ten. Some of our fan favorites making well, their way out Alexi is a fantastic deadlifter, particularly from these elevated pulls. And nine reps. It's going to be hard to beat, but it's beatable. And these guys have all been putting so much work. And I'm looking forward to seeing Pavlo on this. One thing I will say is that Pavlo is the one athlete that didn't test the equipment this week. 
Now, that could be because he just didn't want to show anything, he didn't want to waste any energy, but it could be a mistake as well because this isn't like a standard deadlift. Just getting a feel for that equipment could really be beneficial. But I'll tell you, I've never seen a man with a back as wide as Pavlo. He's got slabs of muscle on there, <laughs> the shoulders. He's, he's only 24, 25 years old, very young, very new to strongman. Comes from powerlifting, and he's an exciting prospect. Martins Leitzies is the defending champion, and he is patiently waiting. And a guy that last year saved his best performance for last in the stone over the hitching post, which I believe was the only event he won, but he was so consistent throughout the competition that a weak event for him was third or fourth place. And that's what makes Martins so incredible, that he just doesn't drop points. And if there is an event that potentially might drop points on, it could well be this deadlift. Not that he's weak at it, he, he's, more, he, he's one of the, the best deadlifters in the world. We just have a number of fantastic pullers here today. And going on those past performances, sometimes from the elevated pull, he's not quite as good. He likes to pull from a lower position. Here comes Rob Kearney. The choice of wearing those leggings, that's quite a smart choice by Rob. It, it, Makes the, the friction against the legs much less. So you see with Rob, sometimes what he does, he does what's called a hitch, and he'll kind of force his knees underneath the bar and jack it up his thighs. He's, he's mastered this movement very, very well. It's not allowed in powerlifting, but it's allowed in strongman. And I'm pretty sure he'll go for it from early on. I'm going to say five to six reps for Rob Kearney. Kearney got off to a great start the last time we saw him compete in the Arnold when you and I got the same. He was actually the overall leader after the first day, wound up finishing fifth in that competition. His day one was fantastic. Next event, the um, Sia Dumbbell is an event he did very well at, at the Arnold. Looking strong here on these first two pulls. Nice. 3 through 3 Be short, he does have a shorter range of motion, which is an advantage, but this is looking very, very strong. There's five. A blast past my predicted reps. Just taking a little breather. Getting harder now. Oh, I might be right. Let me go for that hitch. There's six. He could get one more. Come on, Rob. Get it over those knees and then just push those knees forward and then he'll jack it up by using the quads. Look at that. Gets the down signal. Seven reps for Rob. Great fight so far for Rob Kearney. He's one rep away from Bobby Thompson trying to move into second place. If he can get this. Oh, that, was, that was a fantastic performance there by Rob Kearney. Bringing his best when it counts at the Rogue Invitation. Seven reps for Rob Kearney. Excellent performance there from Rob. And that will set him up well moving into the rest of the competition. Very, very solid. Strong deadlift. He's got a strong second event coming up as well today. We saw him at the Arnold's, like you say, where they did the squat for Max, and he was fantastic on that event. We have the CrossFit world here and the Strongman world here, and Rob Kearney is a guy who sort of bridges that gap. He got a start in Strongman via CrossFit. He still does some CrossFit training every now and then. Works with Matt Fraser, the yeah. Time fittest man on earth, HWPO crew. So, great to see Rob out here competing again. He's a great ambassador for the sport and a fantastic person. He inspires so many people for so many different reasons. But Rob's, you know, he, genetically, he's not the biggest guy. He's had to work hard, and he didn't start out as just being a freak. He was coming last in his first few competitions, and then he, his goal was to not come last, and then it was to come mid-table, and then trying to kind of chase for a podium. Eventually, he got onto a podium. Then he was second place, and eventually, he managed to win a competition. He's had to graft and work hard and prove people wrong throughout his whole career. And he keeps improving. He's come back from so many knockbacks, torn tricep, he had cancer, came back from that. He's someone that never gives up, and is an inspiration to so many of us. Let's take one more look at his performance. And you mentioned the hitch. He didn't have to go to that until the last couple of reps. Last couple of reps. He's clearly been putting the work in, getting stronger, improved the strength in those hips and those glutes, hamstrings. Yeah, those first few reps, absolutely flying. Three reps of 900 pounds in 10 seconds and Rob now. 
Very solid, not rushing, focusing on good technique, taking all the slack out of the bar. And I'll tell you what, a lot of athletes wouldn't have been able to get these last two. He manages to dig deep, pushes the knees forwards, gets up in a higher position, and then drives with the legs rather than pulling through the glutes and hamstrings. where those leggings play a big part. Kearney to tie Bobby Thompson, just didn't have anything left in the tank, but a fantastic performance for Rob Kearney, who sits in third place right now in this event as Martins Lietzis, the dragon, the defending champion, is getting set to come up next. So this is going to be an exciting one. There's been lots of talk, and we need to see what kind of shape his 18-inch deadlift is in. If people have kind of picked a slight weakness, because there's never a big weakness with Martins Lissis, but there, if there is a slight weakness in this set of events, it could well be this one for him. If he manages to finish in the top four on the deadlift, I think the other athletes are going to be very disappointed. Alexei Novikov is still our leader in the event. Nine total reps at 900 pounds. He's coming off eight. He's looking big as well this year. Win at the Arnold Strongman Classic, the last time you and I got to see him compete in person. There's Alexei Novikov looking on to see if his nine reps will stand. Come on, baby! Come on! Go somewhere before it starts. Go somewhere. As soon as you're ready. As as you're he's ready, a you crowd go. favorite because he is quite the character at times. And He's a great character. Fun to watch sport. compete. Always fun. And it's, you'd have to go back to 2018 to find him off a podium. One of the best in the business. World's Strongest Man winner, Arnold's Classic winner, Rogue Invitational winner. Now he's looking to add multiple titles to those. Elite is set. So how is his deadlift looking? Here we go. Solid first rep, but maybe not quite as quick as some of the others we've seen. He needs to just stay tight, keep pulling. There we go, he's getting into his rhythm now. That's three reps. Four, good. Still looking strong. Six. Every rep he's getting, the other guys are going to be more and more disappointed. Seven for Leetes. Oh, you see the effort, but he's still moving well. And that's nine. And now he is tied. No, he still has plenty of time. Leads wow. him. Oh, Ooh. I thought he was going to pull that. He's leaving it there. He was moving well as well. I thought he was going to get the tenth. Well, he's coming back to try. I think Novikov will be disappointed seeing that. Novikov would have really wanted to get the win on this one over Lises. Lises is going to make another run. He just doesn't have it. But he will tie right now. Alexei Novikov for the lead at nine reps, and he rifled through those. I think the other athletes are going to be shocked seeing that. If he's getting joint first on an elevate, from the floor, he's always been exceptionally good, but there's been performances in the past from those elevations where he's not quite as impressive. That shows he's been putting in the work. It shows he's turned up and he wants to defend his title. Four men remain, Mitchell Hooper, Trey Mitchell, Pablo Naganeshi and Maxime Boudreau will be the last man to lift. We have three big deadlifters still to come. Real interesting is now the, there are two men to take down for that top score of nine reps. I see Martins was flying Martins and Novikov those congratulating, first congratulating each other. And this went extremely fast. After that first rep, he got it dialed in. He just, the first rep looked tough, and then, but he kind of controls the weight down, so maintains that tension through his whole body. And he just got into a great rhythm. Every single rep looking the same. Nice lockout, his form is good. When you look at the face, then you see the strain that he's going through. But how many times do we watch Martins Lissis and he just managed to bring it when it counts? He's not one of these guys that posts these huge lifts in the gym. Mm -hmm. He's not showing off in the gym. He saves it.
builds towards the competition, and then when it comes to comp day, just smashes it. Got through nine reps, and then the tenth is where he started to struggle. Did make one more run at it. But you mentioned you know, being able to save his best and, and perform under pressure. You think back to that stone over hitching post event last year where the pressure was a little bit on him. Yeah. Tom Stolman was, Tom Stolman was, was going to make it tough for him. And finished the whole run. But yeah, he, he's, he just knows how to, to perform when it counts. So Mitchell Hooper will be up next, a man you are very familiar with. Yeah, Mitch Hooper's really burst onto the scene this year. He's another one that's very rarely off a podium. His first big international was World's Strongest Man this year. Since then, he's gone on, gone on to compete a number of times. He's won a few big internationals this year, and he's not been off the podium since that World's Strongest Man performance. Finished eighth at the World's Strongest Man. Since World's Strongest Man, he's competed five times, won his last two shows. He's in that same vein as Martins Lysis and that he's consistent and he seems to perform when it counts. This is a new area for him. He's never been at the Rogue Invitational before. Most athletes you'd think would be feeling the pressure, but he seems to take everything in his stride. Let's see what his deadlift is looking like. Were you able to talk to him before the, the competition at all? Yeah, we had a uh, we met up earlier and had a chat, and he's feeling good. Mm -hmm. He's in a good headspace. The, the rain delay and that kind of stuff doesn't affect him. And that was a great first lift there. Looking strong in these early reps. We are down for Hooper. He you said you've got to just go to the wall and give everything on this event. There's no point in holding back in this competition. They've got long periods to rest between events. So he just needs to give 100% as many reps on the board as he can. Hooper's already through six. Getting harder now. Tied with Kearney. Really needs to try and get two more. Gets the down signal. There's one more to tie with Lissis and Novikov. It's looking hard, but he's, he's one of these athletes got power off the floor. If he can get it over those knees, he'll potentially be able to hitch it out. He's close. Can he get it locked out? Those hips need to come through. No, he doesn't get it. Referee does not give him the down signal. It's Magnus for Magnuson in the black cowboy hat. Four-time former World's Strongest Man. He's a strict referee. It was a good performance to get eight. Could have done with a ninth, but it was not locked out. It was the right call from the referee. Hooper will tie with Bobby Thompson at eight reps. Novikov and Lietze still tied for the lead. And now we have three men remaining. Trey is another big deadlifter, and I think the elevated deadlift should suit him as well. Trey Mitchell. I mean, Rob Kearney, seven is huge, and so far that's got him in fifth place. It's a strong <laughs> group of deadlifters, this. Trey Mitchell, a bit of a hometown hero here. He's about four hours away. I know there's a lot of support for him. He's walking around, there's a lot of people cheering for Trey today. Coming off a, a win at the Shaw Classic recently. He was fantastic in that competition. Right, guys, as we bring out our next athletes here in just a moment, remember, Go Ruck builds the Go back to Hooper's here. effort. Starts off really fast and powerful. Lots of fast twitch muscle fibers, and he's an explosive athlete, but burns out a little bit towards the end. Generates great power from the lower position. And we just need to work hard on that lockout strength. He'll come back. Still his rookie year. People need to appreciate it. his first year competing internationally. And he just keeps performing. Tried to fight hard for this ninth rep. Couldn't quite lock it out. The right decision there by Magnus for Magnuson. But look how close he was getting. They just couldn't pull those hips through, couldn't lock those knees out. Very similar to what we saw Bobby Thompson go through on his 
Absolutely. These no are the little threat. things you look back on at the end of the competition, and will they cost him? We'll have to wait and see. Three men remain here in the opening event of the 2022 Rogue Invitational, the Tower of Power, presented by the Air Force. Big Trey Mitchell. 370 pounds, six foot four. He is a beast of a man. Competing in Strongland for about 10 years. We got to see him at the Arnold Classic earlier this year. Took seventh. And I was surprised at that. I was expecting more from Trey at the Arnold's. Got a chance to speak to him after, and he was nursing a couple of injuries. Since then, his performance has been much better. His win at the Shaw Classic was fantastic. And if he's in that kind of form, he could do very, very well this weekend. Lots of people kind of see Trey as the outsider for this competition. There's lots of people talking about him. He's got a lot of support in his home state of Texas. All right, folks, in Lumberton, which is about, about a four-hour drive from here. And this should be a good event for Trey. I mean, we've seen some big numbers. So he's, he knows he needs a minimum of eight reps. He needs to get big points on this one. Anything less than eight, he's going to be disappointed. And we've still got Pavlo Nekonechny, who I'm really looking forward to seeing on this one. Trey is about set. He'll get strapped onto the bar, and then he will have 60 seconds to complete as many reps as he possibly can. Here goes Trey Mitchell. Pops up fast. Interesting watching Trey. It almost looks like the first inch is hard and then it just pops up fast. It's through four. Still moving exactly the same. That first inch is difficult and then nicely fast. He's tied Kearney at seven and now he's moving now to a three way the tie with Thompson and Hooper. He could do 10 here. He needs to use the time. Look at this. He's looking strong. He can still, there's more left. He can get 10 reps. Come on, Trey. This will he, lead. Yes. Trey and Mitchell he gets into it. the lead. One more rep. No, he's leaving it there. 10 reps for Trey Mitchell. Wow. And you know what? I think I, know. I really do. That was powerful. Every single rep the same. He took all that slack up the bar. There's an inch where it looked hard, and then boom, it just popped up nice and powerful. That is the perfect start for Trey Mitchell. And you mentioned you thought he might have more. He's the first athlete I think we've seen that has not failed a rep. Absolutely. There was more in the tank. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't think Pavlo can beat it. Maybe he thinks that's enough for this event, but he's proven he has come here and he wants the challenge to win this title. Big Tex Trey Mitchell is your new event leader. And after seeing that first rep, I think it was pretty clear that he had a chance to chase down that top score. Well, we said before, and he's a big deadlifter. This was the perfect performance for Trey. Every rep looking strong. Powerful legs, powerful back. That's what we spoke about at the start of this event. Trey has both of those in abundance, and this was a fantastic performance. 900 pounds for 10 repetitions. And that was 10, and then he just decided to call it. But it's good enough to put him in the lead with now two men remaining. Nakanechny and Maxime Boudreau, the only two men who have yet to lift. And like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing how Pavlo does on this one. Pavlo Nakanechny, a new athlete from the Ukraine. And deadlift is his favorite event. 
And you mentioned just how wide that man's back is. You could show a movie on that guy's back. <laughs> he is just 375 pounds of muscle. There was a video that Rogue posted on their Instagram account of the athletes checking in. They all got fitted for custom baseball jerseys. And I think they had to go to a local tent maker to get his <laughs> tailored because I don't know how they got a baseball jersey to fit on that man. He looks like he would make the perfect bad in a movie. <laughs> you wouldn't want that man chasing you <laughs> along a train or something like that. <laughs> we might have he, a next Bond villain. He, he just would be one of those guys that just kept coming. Ten reps is the score to beat. He's already shown how powerful he is in competitions over the last couple of years. There is a tendency with him to make mistakes. Now, deadlift is a harder event to make a mistake on. He's technically very efficient at deadlifting, and I've seen him perform crazy reps and numbers when it comes to a deadlift. So I'm expecting nothing different here. But he was the one athlete that didn't I test the equipment. Will that affect him? We'll see. They had all the strong men up there yesterday, just able to kind of mill around and check things out. But as you said, he didn't take some time to just at least pull on the empty bar. Yeah, normally you'd expect athletes to do that, but the deadlift... There's not a huge amount of variation that can happen. I mean, it may cost him, but I think with the amount of power he has, he'll overcome any technical inefficiencies with just ridiculous strength. <laughs> 10 reps, the score to beat. Pablo Nakaneski is the second to last man to go. Maxime Boudreau will close things out here, but Nakaneski now will get strapped onto the bar and see if he can put a little bit of a scare into Trey Mitchell. You know, I think he can. If he, if he gets the feel of the movement right, he is so powerful when it comes to deadlifting. We'll use this first rep to just get the feel of the movement. A little bit like Martins did. And he should be into his rhythm. And that Look is how no problem. easy Look that out. rep was. There's two. Three already. Five repetitions. He needs to keep this going. Nakanechi just ripping through these. He's through seven. Now, every point now is big points, eight reps. You can see the marks on his legs from that knurling on the bar. This to tie Mitchell for the lead. And he Ten will have it. He's gonna get the 11th as well. He wants the win. There's no way he wants to share points. He wants to take the outright win. And there you go, 11 repetitions. Now, if he's smart, he would leave it there. He may go for more. Remember, Max, he's Boudreau going for more. This is, is coming crazy. Up. There's an insurance rep at 12 wow. for Pablo Naganetsky. Wow. 12 repetitions on the deadlift. My personal view is that he did not need that 12 rep, but he wanted to lay the marker down and prove that when it comes to deadlifting, he is the man. It's three repetitions more than the likes of Novikov and two of the best in the world right now when it comes to back and leg strength. This man is number one. The two best scores we have seen have come from our last two lifters. Naganetsny through 12. And Trey Mitchell really didn't have a long time to stand on top of the standing in this event. He got 10. I think Trey's still going to be exceptionally happy with those 10. But wow, 12 repetitions. That was just mind-boggling. <laughs> Let's remind ourselves, it's 900 pounds. 900 pounds for one rep. 10 years ago was huge. <laughs> <laughs> Maxime Boudreau on the left side of your screen. I know we still have Maxime to go, and he is a fantastic all-round strongman. He's got some amazing events to come. I think the Roger Coaster tomorrow has got fantastic grip strength, speed, his overhead is good. But when, there's, when we talk about Maxime, he has one weakness in his arsenal, and that, come, that is with the deadlift. The elevation will help him a little bit, 
but I think, I really, I can't see him beating even Rob Kearney on this one. Let's go back and watch Pablo Nakanechny one more time. And again, with that first rep, you just knew. Wow. Just the speed of every single pull. That is a man built for power. You can see the scraping on the quads from the knurling on the bar. Every rep being dragged up those legs. He's not worried about that. He's just focusing on every single pull. He had the lead at this point and decided to go for 12 and got it. And look at that. 12 repetitions, wow. I thought 10 was possible. He proved me wrong. 12 and I think maybe if he really wanted to, there was 13. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible effort from Pablo Nakanechny as Maxime Boudreau now heads up the stairs at the top of the Tower of Power. I think the important thing for Maxime now is to make sure he tries to beat the two reps of Athor and Kevin. He needs to pick up as many points as possible. The seven reps of Rob is a big, big target. I don't personally think he can do it. So he's got to kind of decide whether it's worth going for the eight reps or he just does the three and then saves his energy. I think that would be my plan. If, I, if you don't feel you can kind of challenge those higher numbers, Maybe he thinks he can get five, just do the three and save the energy for the events that he knows he can really score big points in. The next two events, yes! the Sear Bell Ladder, and then we close day one out with the Usafel Sandbank. Here goes Maxime Boudreau. Come on, Maxime, let's get one on the board. So this is, this is really bad news for Maxime because the rules meeting I went to, if they don't manage to do one rep, they zero points. So you needed one just to get one point. That's gonna cost him. Pablo Nakanechny in his first ever Rogue Invitational appearance. It's gonna lock up the event win. 12 reps at 900 pounds. <laughs> I can't believe we're saying that. 12 repetitions with 900 pounds. This guy, 25 years old, the youngest man in the field, the widest man in the field. Unbelievable performance there from the young Ukrainian. Get used to seeing him on the big stages. Look at the size of him. But it's not just for show, he's got the power there, and he's just proven that in this first event. Well, this was the effort that won it, 12 reps. And he blitzed through these opening four or five before he started to look like he was even straining. Pablo Nakanechny in his first Rogue Invitational appearance starts things off with a bang. He is your event winner and he is with Kiki Dixon. Congratulations on your first ever Rogue Invitational event win. What was it like to lift on the Tower of Power? Um, hi guys, thank you. Uh, it was so easy. <laughs> yeah, that uh, lift on this power. Uh, other was classic deadlift with no stability, but it's no problem for me. <laughs> Apparently so. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pablo Naganetti will earn 10 points. He'll sit atop the overall standings after the opening event. Unofficially behind him, it is Martins Litsis and Alexei Novikov. That'll be a good battle. And then Bobby Thompson and Mitchell Hooper. Trey Mitchell was also in second place, forgot him at 10 reps. So it goes Nakanechny, Mitchell, then Leetzies, 
and Novikov. So plenty of more action still to come in the strongman competition. They'll be back later on with the Sear Dumbbell Ladder. We're going to take a quick break when we return to the Rogue Invitational event number two in the CrossFit competition as the men kicks things off with Ski Bar. <laughs> 